as far as like uh, outside of secrets, this is well known that the Mavericks, Mavericks, that the Cowboys are executing a trade to bring in Jonathan Hankins in at D tackle, and that that raises some questions as you've seen Neville, Neville Gallimore become like a what, what some were calling a healthy scratch this weekend. Where does Neville Gallimore stand with this team, with this coaching staff? What do you, what have you heard? Yeah, that's that's a great question because uh, uh, I take it back to really that open practice they had in training camp uh, with the Broncos in Denver. And uh, after that practice, the first practice was over, Neville talked about how, man, I wish somebody would have given me a heads up about the altitude and talking about how he was winded early on in practice after the first few reps. I don't think that sat very well uh, with the coaching staff. And if, if you notice in the preseason, you know, you get into that third preseason game, fourth quarter, you know, not many starters are playing. In fact, none, uh, except for Neville Gallimore. And you're just kind of like, man, someone seems like they're in the doghouse. <laughs> and so as the season has gone on, it kind of, you know, it's been something on my radar. And then for him to be inactive, and, and I understand that, you know, Stephen Jones came out on your guys' station and he talked about how it's one of those things where he's dealing with some injury stuff and, and, uh, and, and, and so that factored in. But then, you know, when we talked to Mike McCarthy yesterday, he mentioned – that, yeah, he's dealing with some stuff, but he was medically cleared to play in that game as a full participant in practice. And then Mike said at the end, it's coach's decision. It was coaches being his decision to go with Tristan Hill over Neville Gallimore. And I just, I don't think many people would have had that on their bingo card to start the season or back in training camp that, that, uh, I mean, I know I figured if Neville Gallimore is healthy, then Neville Gallimore will be in the, in, in the lineup. And so, uh, there has to be something there, a disconnect with the coaching staff. I don't think that Jonathan Hankins was added just because they're ready to move on from Neville Gallimore. I think Jonathan Hankins was added because they need help stopping the run, and that's his specialty. And, and, and adding him should help, you know, on those first and second down clear running situations. But, no, Gallimore is something to keep an eye on because uh, uh, that, that didn't make a lot of sense that he was in, inactive for that game. I mean, his strengths are pass rushing more so than Hankins, so they're not a complete – you know, perfect comp or anything like that. But uh, anytime you're adding a D tackle and you are a D tackle who is just inactive, there's no way that sits well with you. It's also convenient because they watched the Chicago Bears run for 241 yards on a Bill Belichick defense on yeah, Monday Night Football. <laughs> the, the timing, not bad, bringing in Jonathan Hankins after what Chicago did to New England uh, last night. When you start thinking about this defense, who's obviously been really good against the – or excuse me, getting after the quarterback this year – what now does this defense look like in your mind with Hankins added to the rotation and what that can mean for the continued growth and possible ceiling for this defense here? Yeah, well, I think he helps a lot with, with the run just from a standpoint of they're not going to be asking probably as much from him as the Raiders were. So there's probably a better chance than you keeping him fresh and, you you know, you can pair him with Quentin Bohanna and, you know, Osa Digizua, and, and, and that should help some things up the middle, whether it be, you know, getting getting tackled himself uh, or just clearing space so that the guys like Leighton Van Der Esch can, can make tackles and, and, and get to these backs so that there aren't these big gains uh, in, in the running game like we've seen. And frankly, to me, that's their only weakness has been – and, and I don't want to sit here and say that their run defense has been awful because obviously we've seen awful Cowboys run defense two years ago. Uh, but it's, you look at the rest of that team on, on defense and you're like, man, if they can stop the run consistently, I mean, they're a problem for everyone because they want you to, to go back and pass. They want to they let the Micah Parsons and Demarcus Lawrences and Dorrance Armstrongs and Dante Fowlers, they want them to be able to pin their ears back and get after you, Sam Williams. Mike McCarthy's even said himself, if I was playing us, I would be trying to run the ball because I don't want to sit back and throw with these pass rushers. So if they can consistently stop the run, well, then then you're just feeding into exactly what they want. And so that's why, you know, the plan for that Eagles game, the hope was that they could get a lead early so that they could pin their ears back and they could make Jalen Hurts into more of a passer. But that obviously never happened. But when they play and they see the Eagles again on Christmas Eve, I promise you that'll be the game plan. We're talking to the homie John Mashota of The Athletic. And speaking of, you know, trying to make or a, a, an opponent pass, in doing so, you typically would lean on a quarterback or a cornerback core that you felt very comfortable with that you've had intact for a little while. You lose Jordan Lewis for the rest of the season. And that raises some questions as to who filters in, who takes some of those snaps. Do we have any clarity on who the coaching staff likes between Deron Bland, Kelvin Joseph, and maybe even Deshaun Wright and how they're be utilized? 
yeah, I mean, the coaching staff isn't going to just come out and say, sure. we're fine. We got Duran Bland, but I, I, I doubt they're losing a ton of sleep because of how highly they think of Duran Bland. Now they love Jer- Jordan Lewis and they would obviously prefer to have Jordan Lewis's experience, the way he's played the position. Uh, Dan Quinn loves Jordan Lewis uh, for several reasons. Um, but also if you're an NFL coach, you have got to be pretty realistic that, Hey, uh, in a long season and the way this game's played, we're going to lose some players. And obviously like the Cowboys have with their starting quarterback that missed five games. So that stuff's going to happen. They're their left tackle that's missing most of the season. So uh, that's part of it. And you got to, it's got to be next man up and that's easier said than done. But because of what Jerron Bland did in training camp and in the preseason and in the game where he filled in and started for Jordan Lewis earlier in the year against Washington, uh, I don't think there's any doubt that he's the guy that they're going to put in there. And yeah, I mean, he's a rookie. There'll be some, you know, there'll be a little bit of growing pains here or there, but I think that he's in a great spot because that's where his natural position is. At least they feel like is in that slot position. Uh, I just wonder now what happens because now everybody else moves up one spot in the depth chart, and then that means the next guys up are Kelvin Joseph and Nishan Wright, who, hey, those are guys they drafted last year pretty highly, second and third round. Uh, so I think they want to see what they can get from them. Um, but there's a little bit more unknown there. I, they certainly feel more comfortable with Jerron Bland than they do right now with Joseph Wright. Let's switch our conversation a little bit to the offensive side of things. Uh, from your perspective now going forward with Dak Prescott back in the fold, what do you think the identity of this offense needs to continue to be? Obviously, with establishing the run game with Ezekiel Elliott and Tony Pollard, what does this offense look like in your mind now that Dak Prescott is back? Well, yeah, I think they got to stay with running the ball. And and I don't know that that's necessarily their greatest strength. I mean, I feel like it is with what this offensive line does best and what this team does defensively. You're better off to, you know, being a good run team and just passing when you need to. Um, but you would hope with having a Michael Gallup and the way that these tight ends have stepped up and, and you know, having a C.D. Lamb that, you know, and obviously having a $40 million quarterback that you'll be able to throw the ball when you need to. Uh, but I don't think they're going away from leading with the run. I think that's the way it's going to be. Um, I, I, I don't think Dak will just be throwing 20, 25 times a game. I think it'll get closer to, to 30, uh, and, I, and that kind of depends on what opponents are able to do. Um, but the Cowboys say they want balance, but I think that they would love to get that running game going and, and just lean on that for as long as they can um, just because of, like I said, that's the best that that's the best thing that this offensive line does is run block. So that's so their strength, that's the Zeke's strength, that's the Pollard's strength, and that's the defensive strength. So it sucks to the people that want to see the big points or have Cowboys players in their fantasy teams, <laughs> but I just think that they have found a formula that they believe works. And let's be honest, uh, if you look at the rest of the NFC, it's that that conference is there for the taking. Uh, yeah. And you don't need to be 1992 Dallas Cowboys uh, to win the NFC. You have to have something that works and be really good on one side of the ball and just be pretty good on the other side of the ball. And that might find you in Arizona. So uh, if, if this was a few years back, you know, heck, even last year, and, and, and I knew that they were going to have to go and beat an Aaron Rodgers and a Tom Brady and a Drew Brees and all these seasoned veteran quarterbacks, it's a little bit different. Uh, but if they got to go up and beat Jalen Hurts or Kirk Cousins or Jimmy Garoppolo or Daniel Jones, uh, I think I, I like their chances with this defense. When you put it like that, good gracious. <laughs> it's not the vintage, you know, NFC quarterbacks of uh, of yesteryear when you put it in that in that light there. So, um, John, one thing that you talk about, obviously, like trying to lean on the run, one thing that's kind of made passing tough is that it seemed like they wanted to have a lot of wide receivers to be able to lean on. And some of those guys have been kind of absent for various reasons, some kind of conspicuously so. What is happening with Jalen Tolbert and obviously James Washington? When when can we expect to see him again? Yeah, I mean, they were expecting more from Jalen Tolbert at this point. Uh, That's why they drafted him in the third round. Uh, And there's been some growing pains, but they still feel good about where he's going. It's just I don't think he's gotten to where they want him to uh up to this point and so he's been active the last couple of weeks he's trending in the right direction every time he we asked you know whether it's dan quinn or mike mccarthy about him they point to how he's going to have to help on special teams and do things like that um but still he's he was drafted to be a wide receiver this is a team that needs wide receiver help so uh they need him to be a contributor sooner than later uh because you know 
it, they have a solid three, but you need another receiver for sure to step up. Uh, James Washington is a guy who we've seen him out at, at, at practices working on the resistance cords. He said his straight line running is fine. It's, it's ready to roll. It's the cutting uh, that is not quite there yet with the foot injury he suffered in that first padded practice of training camp. So um, that's where they're hoping they can get some help but I wouldn't rule out them trying to make a move for another wide receiver. I'm not saying that that's going to happen, but if you told me that the Cowboys are going to make another move between now and the November 1st trade deadline, uh, I think wide receiver is clearly the spot that you'd have to target. 